Well, hello everybody. I'm out here capturing SH2-84 and it's a very dim HA region, you know, HA emission uh, region. And I'm not sure I'm going to get much out of this. I, I don't know. It's an experiment. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I already captured a couple hours the other night in HA and it I didn't really see much in the single exposures, but uh, we'll see what happens when I stack it. I want to get a whole bunch of data on this, maybe four, over four hours, maybe more. Uh, we'll see. Now, I'm inside my shed right now, and I'm using my uh, Orion Cirrus mount. And I think I told you in a previous video I had to use f for guiding, and it was I had to use that telephone cable again. And that's been working out pretty well. I've been getting real, real good Exposure guarding. Started. Famous last words. And another thing I'm doing differently, or I haven't done in a while, or I, I have never done before. Actually, I've been doing it the last couple times. I've been using the automatic focus, and it has been working. I, I experimented with this last month, and I think I stated in a previous video that I like using the Botnoff mask better, but. I'm actually growing to like this uh, automatic focus uh, feature in astrophotography tool and we'll see how it goes after another couple times of use and I might make a video of it again on how to do it. I just chickened out right now because I'm still not uh, I'm still learning it myself but it looks like it, it looks like it's been doing really the focusing it's been really good anyways. That's it for now. I'm actually I'm taking an image right now, so maybe I'll put you guys on pause if I can figure out how to do it, and we'll see what the first exposure looks like. Oh, I de pause. Yeah, it's still going right now. I'm doing uh, 180 seconds, which is three minute exposures. I've got my camera set at minus 10 degrees. Uh, everything's tracking. I already point uh, use point craft in order to locate and the object as well as uh, frame it. And one other thing I wanted to show you was the here it is. This is the Pegasus Pocket Power Box and I got the temperature set at 82 degrees or I think that's what this means, 82 degrees. And I've been using this since I got it for the last uh, four months now, this Pegasus Power Box, but it, it also has a do heater functions as well. Okay, let's see what we got. I'll, I'm going to put you back on pause until this thing is uh, ready. Oh, wait, before I do that, uh, here's my tracking. Uh, and I said it's pretty good. Okay, I'm back, and here's the first exposure. And as I said, there's not much there. You can follow my mouse. See, there's a little bit in here, but there should be a lot more. And hopefully there is once I stack everything. Again, here's my guiding. Guiding looks pretty good, or I'm happy with it. As long as this number is below one, I use, I get really good. Uh, the stars are nice and round. Let me maximize this so we can really look at it. And another thing I can do is I'll uh, go down here to image preview. And if I go down here to one to one, it's going to zoom in and you can see the stars here. So you can see how nice and rounded they are. Oh, this is HA by the way too, so that's why it, it may not be as bright as uh, you would expect. But anyways, you can see the stars are nice and circular, so and, and they're really focused in pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with this automatic focusing. So we'll see how it goes. As I said, if I do a couple more nights using this automatic focuser, I'm, I might put a video on on how to do it. Okay, well that's all I have for now. We'll see you later. Hi right, folks, I'm back. Let me show you what uh, I wound up with with uh, this SH2-84. So this is my red channel. Looks pretty good, I think. Uh, stars are nice, well-rounded. Here's the green. Again, nice, well-rounded. Blue, same thing. Big, rich star field. And then for the HA, which is what I was worried about, I did catch some nebulosity. 
uh, quite a bit actually. I did not get the full four hours, over four hours that I think I was after. But I think I got like three and a half or three and a quarter, but I'm happy with what I got. So let's take a look at what else we have here. This is the HA. Looks pretty good. And then this is the finalized version of the HA. Oops, there it is again. So I, this is after I did uh, some uh, morphological transformation to get rid of some of the stars or make the stars some some of the stars smaller. And here's, let me just show you some of the noise in the original image. And here's some of the noise after it's been reduced. There's still a little bit of noise in there. But that was gotten rid of when I redid the images in Photoshop. And here's what the original blue, for example, the noise in the original stacked images look like. Okay, then I made an... I combined them to make the RGB image. Again, you can see some of that noise, but you can see some of the star color. And then here is the finalized version of the RGB image. And again, I did some star reduction here and you can see how nice and smooth that star field is. And then this is after I combined it to make the HA RGB. In order to make the HA RGB, and again, I smoothed the field out, I took that HA data and I replaced the red channel with the HA image and wound up with this original HA RGB image. Okay, well here it is in Photoshop now, and this is the HA RGB image. This is what this looks like in Photoshop. And this is what the HA looks like in Photoshop. Whenever I bring HA images in Photoshop, for some reason it's always overexposed. So I have to lessen the exposure using levels. So I just lower the leveling, and this is what I wound up with. All right, then what I did is I took this image and I copied it onto my HARGB image as a layer and wound up with this. So it looks pretty good. And I did some other manipulation, obviously. And the other big thing that I did was this star over here. My camera always, with large stars, it, uh, it, it's hard to do large stars. It makes a geometric pattern. So I did a little bit of manipulation and I think it looks okay now. It looks much much better. So anyways, this is the final image, how it looks. I'm pretty happy with it. I think uh, everything worked out really well, and I couldn't be happier with this ASI 1600 that I use. It does a great job with catching a lot of the light, and that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you later.